All right, everybody, how's it going? Welcome to this discussion video where I'm going to be talking about uh, something that I'm really passionate about with Darkest Dungeon 2 and something that I've been talking about a lot in my streams with other creators, with other players, and something that I think is, is just a really good talking point for the future of Darkest Dungeon 2 and where I would like to see the game go. So what's going on in the background here is just some gameplay just something to, for you to watch you know you can watch me fail i think we're about to go fight the general or something so probably gonna go fail at that but really what this video is going to be about is uh an issue not an issue but something that i really really hope is going to be added into the game into darkest dungeon 2 as kind of one of the final developments and it's something that i really think that the game needs in order to survive long term and what that is is essentially some form of challenge or difficulty mode or increase that is scaling over time um, and is something that currently in the game does not exist and is what I think one of the biggest, if not currently the largest glaring issue in the game. Outside of like balance issues and you know some like tweaks that the game needs to be made, the game has a lot of really good bones. It's got a great skeleton. I've got 700 hours plus in the game and it's really there, right? But this is the thing that I think is really missing. And I, I think a lot of players agree with me. I think a lot of people do agree that this is the thing that is missing still. So like I said, I, I, I just want to say these are my opinions. These are my thoughts on it. I am not a developer for Red Hook. I'm not a game developer in general. I don't understand what kind of things can and can't be done, the difficulty of those things. And at the end of the day, I don't have the final vision for what the game is going to be. That is in the creators of Red of Darkest Dungeon 2 and, and at Red Hook, that is their prerogative to make. And this is only just my thoughts as a player, somebody who's very passionate about it, and something that I, I think is really, really you know, hopeful for the future of the game. I want this game to succeed. I absolutely love it. And I think this is something that will really help get the game to that point where people are going to be playing it years down the road. So one of the things, you know, and, and we've talked about this before, one of the things that the game did need at one point, right, was that it was missing uh, some of the aspects that make it a roguelike, right? The biggest thing before was meta progression that's been added into the game since. And like I said, I think the next thing that really needs to be added as kind of a an overarching goal of the game is going to be the necessity for some form of challenge mode. It needs an increasing difficulty or challenge that can be added to the game once the core game is beaten, right? Because right now, once you beat all the acts, right? Say that they add Act 4 and Act 5, assuming that they act similarly. There's really no reason to continue playing at that point. There's no reason to grind for candles. There's no reason to keep going besides just trying to get better at the game. And while that does hold value, it's not something that many players are going to want to do. There's really no interest at that point because you're just doing the same thing, which is part of a roguelike but there's no difficulty increase. The game won't get more difficult. You just unlock more things, make the game easier, get better at the game, and eventually that's gonna become very, very dull, right? There's no reason to want to continue playing past that point, right? And I think this can be shown really well in other roguelikes that do similar things with challenge modes, right? We have uh, some great examples, and these are the two that I'm going to use throughout the video just because a lot of people know of these. There are many, many, many examples and ones that I'm not aware of, but the two that come to mind are the Ascension System in Slay the Spire and the Pact of Punishment System in Hades. If you don't know what these are, essentially in Slay the Spire, there's an Ascension System where once you beat all the acts, uh, you can then add uh, difficulty. You can do like Ascension 1, I think it was for like Ascension 1 through 20, and at, you can beat the game at Ascension 1, and what Ascension 1 basically adds a modifier where like, I think enemies are more difficult, like elites are more difficult or have a high, harder chance of being beaten. You can beat all the acts at that point, and then you can go to Ascension 2 where it has that modifier plus another one, Ascent, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You basically get a higher score for beating the game at higher Ascensions. It's bragging rights more than anything else at that point, which is totally fine because eventually you get to the point where currencies don't mean anything in the game, and it really is just bragging rights. Like, hey, I beat this crazy challenge. I got to Ascension 20, and I've got a 10 win streak at this point. Like, eventually it does have to end, but that is one example of kind of a scaling linear difficulty system. And the other one, which I'm a bit more interested in, and I think is a bit better of a decision, but I think there should be kind of a combination of these two things, is the Pact of Punishment system in Hades, where essentially you get to start the run, 
you get given a selection of modifiers that can be added to the run that make the game more difficult, that change core aspects of the gameplay, make the run more dynamic. So even after hundreds of hours, you can add one of these modifiers and it can make the game more difficult, more fun, more different. Something you're going to have to like, oh, I've played this for hundreds of hours, but like, oh, I need to now think differently. This has changed something drastically enough that I now have a new challenge, right? I think in some cases it like adds additional uh, bosses into a boss fight or makes, you know, obviously there are simple ones like increasing the stats of enemies or increasing the number of enemies, et cetera, et cetera. And, and as you do more of these packs, you basically increase your heat level, I think it's called, um, and you unlock more rewards for doing so because you've beaten the game at higher heat levels and you get more payment as, you know, whether it be points. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's darkness. You get more darkness, something along those lines. Uh, I've not played Hades in a long time, but again, you get a better reward for beating the game. You also get bragging rights for beating the game with a higher heat level. You know, people can say I beat the game at heat level, etc. Um, and that allows you to kind of say that you are very good at the game and it gives the love longevity. Even after you've beaten the game 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 times, you can increase the difficulty and make it more of a struggle and add more player agency and, and make it more dynamic, which I think is something the Darkest Dungeon 2 not only would do well from, but I think it needs, right? It, it, it needs something as it is advertising itself as a roguelike or road liked, whichever one you want to call it, uh, that it needs something that gives the player some reason to continue playing the game after the base game is beaten. After they've gone through all the story elements, after they've unlocked everything, the altar is complete. Why should I, the player, invest another 10, 15, 20, 100 hours into this game and continue playing it? Now, this is particularly important to me as a content creator because I want to obviously continue creating content, but I think it's important to the player base as a whole for a healthy game to have something that allows the player to continue playing, right? So those are the two systems that I definitely think I'm going to be referencing a lot. Again, there are plenty of other ones like this. And the reason I think this is important, right, is if we look at, say, Darkest Dungeon 1, which isn't as much of a roguelike as it may be advertised as, but if you look at the game, the game is still being played. A lot of people play the game currently. But when you look at people who've been playing the game for a long time, they started resorting to kind of doing extreme challenges in order to continue getting enjoyment out of the game. The big one that you see people do is like Torchless, Deathless, Blood Moon runs, right? None of those things are necessarily mechanics, besides Blood Moon, I would say, uh, are mechanics that are like intended play styles of the game, right? Torchless isn't something the devs put in as like a, a thing you can select and turn on and be like, hey, this makes the game more difficult. It's a challenge mode. It's something that players have done to the game and even modded into so that way abilities don't increase torch light and you don't have to worry about using torches. You can't even buy them from the caretaker or whatever the case may be in order to make the game more difficult so people can get more enjoyment out of the game. Deathless, again, is a self-inflicted challenge that players give themselves to make the game more difficult and more enjoyable for them after they've put in 600 hours into the game and they're still looking to get something out of it, right? Yes, it's a challenge mode, but it's not one that was given to the player, right? And now we've gotten to the point where obviously the modding community is doing most of the work, adding in additional creative enemies, monsters, um, bosses, heroes, whatever the case is. And these are all incredible things, but I would really love to see Red Hook take a note from these modders and from how the community has reacted to wanting to keep this game alive and add these tools into the game themselves so that way players can do this kind of casually. They don't need mods in order to modify the difficulty of the game. And whereas mods should still, still definitely be a part of the community in the future, this will allow players who are casual players to still have a way to increase the challenge, right? So uh, I do have hope though, that this is something that is going to be added to the game in some form. I don't know how that's going to look. I don't know what the final form of that is. And the reason I have hope for this is that in the most recent patch notes of the game, there was a note that basically said that they are going to be expanding the role of the Infernal Torch as it currently stands in the game, but that it's still a ways off. And that gave me a lot of hope. It gave me a lot of thoughts about like, ooh, okay, so the Infernal Torch, if you don't know, is a mechanic that you can add into the game that basically increases the challenge or the difficulty of the game. Right now, it's pretty boring, right? All it does is it increases the dot resistance of enemies. It gives them additional crit chance. It makes things slightly more difficult. In fact, I'd actually say in some ways it makes the game easier because you don't have to worry about Torchlight anymore and managing that as a resource at all. But it does just make the game slightly more difficult or maybe a fair bit more difficult, but it's very baseline. It doesn't 
increase. There's no difficulty spikes. It's you just do it. It's done. And you go from that point. And for me at this point, it's really the only way I play the game because it's a little bit too easy when I play it on Torchless. Uh, but I don't have any other way of modifying it. I kind of gotten stagnant with even Infernal Torch, right? But I would love to see this mechanic, the Infernal Torch, something that I can add onto the game, incorporate aspects from things like Ascension or Pact of Punishment or other examples of similar challenge modifiers that can be added to the game. And I, there's a couple things that I've talked about with my viewers and other content creators that I think would be interesting things that could be added onto this, right? I do think that an Ascension style kind of just hey, you restart the game, there's a base modifier that gets added on, you know, an Ascension 1 essentially thing that gets added on that is just kind of a static increase in difficulty is definitely one approach. But I would like to see something like an additional building added to the altar where you can pull up your Infernal Torch and you can select from modifiers that you can pick as the player to increase the challenge of the game and create interesting dynamic difficulty settings that you, you know, I'm interested in playing this modifier, but maybe not this one. And maybe you can unlock more as you go. But some examples I have of this are things like you start with 10 mastery points and that's it. You get to the first in, you get 10 mastery points, you select them onto your heroes. You don't get any more for the rest of the run, right? That can definitely increase the difficulty, increase your strategy. What moves do I really need? I need to think about what the final fight is going to be like, what everything is going to be like from between here and the confession boss. How is that going to work for me? Um, what's going to be good for this team, etc. You know, where do I want to put those moves? Because you don't get the chance to do anything more than that. Another one that's pretty simple would be making all enemies ordained, right? Right now in region one, there's zero ordained enemies. In region two, it's like half the enemies are ordained. And then it's 90% in the last region. So you still run into a fair few enemies that aren't ordained. What about making a modifier that makes all of them ordained? That would increase the difficulty of the game quite a lot maybe even random ordainments, right? Hey, after you've beaten, and again, I think these are things would be stuff that you can only really do after you've beaten all the acts. You should play the game at a base before you get these kind of modifiers. But what about random ordainments, right? You go in there and it could be enemies in a, like multiple enemies on a single fight could have ordainments from any of the five acts. Assuming that all five acts get a different ordainment buff, which it looks like they're going to. So you could get act one, act four, act three. You could have three different ordainment busts that you now have to balance and figure out what is the priority here. This one's going to burn me. This one's got increased move resist. This one's going to steal my tokens. Like, oh, shoot, like which one do I focus on first? Um, what's the real threat here? That could be a very good one. Random confession bosses, I think, would be very interesting. So that way, when you're at the crossroads, you don't even know what confession boss you're going to get, because uh, right now I think it's it's pretty obvious that a lot of players, they'll just pick a team that's going to work for the final boss. Um, and not knowing what boss it could be could definitely create some interesting uh, strategic choices about like what's a good generic team that's going to work for anything. Um, could also be like solo runs. This is something I've talked about with like Shuffle in particular. And I think this is something that I think would be a lot of fun. They have like the thrilling tablet in the game, which is a trinket that increases your hero's health and damage depending on how many heroes are dead on your team. Why not make that just a difficulty setting? You start with one hero, you start with thrilling tablet go from there instead of having to do things like players right now what they're doing is just modding the game so they don't start with any additional heroes again give the players those tools don't make it something that they have to go in and modify in the files like a solo run is super fun people have made it work it's very challenging and giving the player agency to do that will increase the you know that's for me as a content creator that's a week's worth of videos right there solo leper run a solo highwayman run a solo plague doctor run whatever the case is even more so as more heroes get added could be very very interesting um and another one i thought about just as a as a quick one was just like what about a limited pool of currency you kind of start with some money right now what if they give you a little bit more and that's it you don't pick up any more relics any more baubles maybe even add the mastery points into that um whatever the case is and then you start with a pool of money that's it. You have to be very careful about your decisions. These are just some examples, and I'm sure there are many, many more that could be added that would give a lot of dynamic play styles to the game. That after the base game has been beaten, there are lots of additional things that you can do that will make you want to continue playing the game and help with the longevity of it, right? Um, and so as far as like the rewards for this, I'm not sure what would work best. I think, you know, some sort of scoring system is definitely a really good idea. We've had a scoring system in the game before, back before the altar was added in. You got like a point system that told you what your your points were, what your score was at the end of the run. And while I think this is kind of basic, uh, it is something that eventually 
you know, players who do continue and want to do all these challenges, or eventually you're going to get to the point where the currency, like the candles, whatever the case is, the meta progression is fully, fully unlocked. Um, and really bragging rights are going to be the only thing. And that's not bad. Like that's having a leaderboard or having, um, you know, point scale where you can say, hey, I got to, I did all these challenges and this was my points. Like this is going to give people a reason to keep playing, to show that they're the best of the game, whatever the case is. So something as simple as that could be good. And even just um, making the candles, I think this is a whole different issue in the game currently. And again, we don't have all the end game material, so I don't know what at least it's going to look like in the end. But making the candles as kind of a, hey, if you want to unlock more modifiers, you have to buy them with candles, could make it more of like a, hey, you know, you do a challenge run with the base modifiers that increases your candle rate. You come back, you use those candles, you buy more modifiers that you then add on to your runs for increased challenge to get even more candles that, un you know, again, allowing the player uh, to have a use for these things past the base game definitely allows for more strategy it creates you know ooh, maybe i should keep these candles maybe i'll make the decision to not drop because right now of course with the big thing is players are just dropping candles once they have a fully unlocked altar we don't know what the pet system is going to be like we don't know what this potential challenge system might look like whatever the case may be i do have hopes that the developers are aware that that's an issue and there needs to be something to dump candles in besides just like throwing them into that pool of reflection thing but again, I don't know what that's going to look like, but it could be something like this, where if you want to unlock additional modifiers or maybe you want to unlock the next ascension level, quote unquote ascension level, if we have kind of a dual system of like similar to Pact of Punishment and also ascension, you need to buy into it with candles, whatever the case may be. There's loads of things like that that I think could allow for there to be more dynamic things at the end game, like the true end game, the new game plus kind of deal and we've seen this succeed with many many games many games have a new game plus an ascension a prestige system there's a reason these systems are in the game it's to give players a reason to continue playing past being the best that they can be at the base game it's particularly important in something like a single player game where there's no competitive reasoning beyond that now something else i would like to see added to the game and i think this might be just a bit more me and maybe not something that's entirely necessary but i think is very doable is some sort of weekly or well, i'd hope weekly but like weekly or monthly challenge system where the devs can come up with a specific special like seated run that has very unique or dynamic challenges or comment like special ones that they've made for specific for this challenge or even that the community has put come together and said do x y and z that's a really crazy challenge and then we have a seed and then people can play that seed uh maybe it's a shortened run or whatever the case is to allow for players to be able to do it and go from that point and be like hey Let's, uh, everybody can do this C, they can do this challenge, we get a point system, there's a leaderboard that's public to everybody. That gives people a way to, you know, want to, oh, I want to get the best score on this, or whatever the case is, and give, you know, kind of a, a, a healthy competition, a PvP almost, that's not the Butcher Circus, because I'm not a big fan of Butcher Circus, I know a lot of people are, but some sort of challenge system like that, I think is definitely doable in this game. Again, I'm not a game dev, I don't know what the requirements are for something like that, and that may be something that's way off in the future, but that kind of system or something akin to that could be so very good for the longevity, for the health of this game in the long run, right? And then, you know, again, I don't think the mods are a bad thing. I think the game should be modded. I think we should, uh, you know, Darkest Dungeon 1 succeeded so well, uh, particularly, of course, because of the fact that modders were able to do some fun and interesting things to the game. But adding these tools into the game so that casual players can do things like challenge modes, increase difficulty, whatever the case is, is not a bad idea. This allows modders to focus on things that are maybe a bit more fun and dynamic, like, you know, custom classes, custom enemies, uh, you know, or even just give them a much bigger ease of access to doing things like custom challenges because the tools are in the game already. They don't have to create something that does that so that in the future, once, you know, Red Hook decides in a couple, you know, five years or whatever to kind of start moving on to other IP or, you know, going on to their next big endeavor, which, hey, whatever that might be, could be, you know, require the team to stop being as supportive on Darkest Dungeon 2 and, and all that fun stuff. Eventually it will happen. You know, this will allow them, the modding community, to at least have the base tools for them to be able to go forth and create so much more for the community to continue playing, to, you know, for creators to make fun and interesting challenges for people to watch and enjoy um, and for people to join in. And I think that's really, really important, right? So 
yeah, I think that's that's pretty much my ramble on this. I just think it's something, and I, I don't know what that's going to look like. In the, and I, I really do think it's something that the devs are aware of. It has been hinted at. They've talked about this, like, expanding the torch. But for all I know, it could just be, like, they increase, they get, like, four difficulties for the torch. And it's like, okay, that's it. It's like, I really hope that they're willing to go the extra mile and give us something that allows us to really get every inch of enjoyment out of this game and to really push those limits without having to go to external things like mods or having to create our own weird brutal mechanics that like and, and self set rules that aren't really mechanics in the game i want to have these things built in as tools that allow me as a player to just do things for fun and enjoyment um, and work with other creators or just watch other players or just have people enjoy things and be able to make this a much more enjoyable experience through the years to give the game the legs to keep going and I, i'm hopeful that red hook is is aware of that and that they're going to do this because it is something that is kind of a staple in the roguelike territory the roguelike genre and i hope that they don't think that they're above it because it's it's really good and i know the devs are listening to this kind of stuff and and that brings me to my next point which is that if you have an idea of some kind of challenge or some kind of thing that is akin to this that you're interested or would be interested in seeing in the game put it in the comment section down below right red hook does listen to this feedback this is very apparent in the new relationship update like that relationship update would not have happened had there not been feedback given to red hook by the players so they do listen to these things. If you want to be a part of the development of this game, you want to help make it better, which I know I'm passionate about. I know many of you are passionate about as well. Join the Darkest Dungeon Discord, join the Reddit, talk about these things, comment on videos, comment to each other, have discussion threads in the, in the Discord and go to the feedback and put your feedback there as long as it's constructive and not just like game sucks, refund please, uh, or whatever the case may be. You know, there we can make this game so much better as a community and you know, the more ideas that Red Hook gets, the better the game will be. So, and uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, and you want to have more discussions like this and, and have more input and things like this, or listen to me ramble on about things like this for more time, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel. It super duper helps me. It's one click away for you, and I'd really, really appreciate it. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.